Good morning and welcome back to the Cascade Subdivision in HO Scale. Today I'm going to be demonstrating how I painted the tunnel portal for Tunnel 22. As you can see here, I started with a base layer of acrylic craft paint. This is a combination of light gray and tan. And my painting efforts throughout the video are based on um, very simple techniques simple and readily available products, as well as um, using reference to prototype photos to ensure realistic painting and weathering. My goal here is to demonstrate a technique that's easy to achieve and um, subtly conveys a very realistic realistic look for your, your railroad. So, first step here I'm just applying a base layer of the gray over the entire portal which is a precast portal in resin and I'm working with a flat brush just getting in all the all the sides and edges ensuring that all the stark white of the resin is covered um, So here I am starting to work down the left hand side, changing the brush angle. It's just kind of a tight space, so difficult to get in there. I am thinning the gray paint with water just a little bit. So now that that initial flat gray layer is in, I'm gonna come in with a wash of burnt umber in black craft paint. Again, thinned with water and just start applying it over the entirety of the tunnel. My initial wash was a little dark, um, but it always does dry a little bit lighter than, than it is when you first apply it. No panic here if your wash is too dark. Um, here, instead of reloading my brush with paint or with the wash, I came in with just clear water and started to move around on the front of the portal some of the paint that I had already applied. I did dry the gray with a hair dryer for a minute or so just to ensure that that layer was that layer was um, dry for me to apply this wash. I did get some some pickup of that layer as I kept working, but uh, I think it actually worked out in my favor to blend. Now I'm starting a dry brushing technique. Again, this is black and burnt umber. And on the proto prototype photos I was using, in the top right-hand corner of the, the portal, there was a lot of um, dirt and moss and probably a little bit of, of mold buildup from the, the wet Oregon weather. And so I'm trying to replicate that here by dry brushing black and brown. Um, Primarily focusing in this top right hand corner, but I actually end up doing it over the the entirety of the portal. Gives it a good nice grime look and it brings out some of those cast cast details on the portal itself. The important thing with dry brushing is to make sure that there is very little paint on the brush. Um, you just want to continually hit the the highlights of um, of whatever you're dry brushing, whether that be a tunnel portal or even some of the rock work, um, I dry brush with with a gray and a white to bring out some of the details, um, just as you would use a wash to bring out the depth and the shadows. Um, dry brushing helps to bring out some of those those higher up um, details. Um, as I keep dry brushing, I'm continuing to mix my black and burnt umber. A 
applying it from different angles, different directions, just to make sure I get get all the all the spots and it doesn't look too too uniform. The key here is to build up in layers. I know I wanted the darker upper right hand corner and so I keep starting there. However, I don't go initially to the darkest tone that I want. I keep building it up, building it up. Um, this helps increase the amount of control one has when applying color. Um, it's easier to slowly build up to, to what you're looking for instead of overshooting. So now that the paint layer is applied, I'm coming in with weathering powders. These are an AIM product or AIM. Um, and I'm starting with a medium earth tone, generally applied all over. And I work a medium earth tone and actually a gray tone into the over the entire um, entire portal just to create a dusty look. Again, with weathering powders, it's best to work in light applications, multiple applications, building up to the desired color. I always work um, from my lightest weathering powders, so a medium earth, gray, and then as I continue to build up, I work into darker colors, a dark earth color, any is great for rust and dirt and then finally black you'll notice the strokes i'm using have changed from horizontal to vertical as i continue to build up that dark color i want to simulate the vertical streaking of rain that would wash down a lot of dirt and grime and again i'm using prototype photos here to understand and best place the streaks so they look realistic and get the coloring correct. Right now I'm using a, a flat brush that I only use for weathering powders and it's been splayed a lot, but I do use a fine brush and I will show a little bit of that, but I had to turn the camera off and move the tripod to ensure that those finer streaks were, were straight and in the proper position. So here I'm coming with a fine brush just highlighting that crease with some dark earth and here's the finished portal you can see the weathering powders and the streaks have been applied in a really subtle subtle manner and as well as the color variation we achieved through the dry brushing and the multiple applications of, of dry brushing as well as um, the multiple applications of gray and brown powders. Again, you don't want to coat the entire portal, merely just hit and accent different, different areas of it. Um, really pleased with how this turns out. I think turned out, I think it blends really well into the surrounding rock work and scenery and um, doesn't stand out, which is exactly what what I was looking to achieve here. Um, and so I hope that you give these easy and straightforward techniques a try. Again, just some craft, craft paint, some simple brushes, and um, weathering potters in a few different colors. So thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more video updates.